Biomedicine analysis, a great way to measure your health. Love this way of monitoring your health. We've been doing it for over 20 years. We were really mocked at first for doing the BIA because nobody really knew what was doing. But that's what happens when you're at the forefront of technology. But really, even back then, over 100 independent studies had corroborated why we were doing this. It's used in hospitals. It's used in research settings. And I'm happy to say that locally, even in our area here, the hospitals are starting to use it to monitor their patients in the cardiac, in the kidney, as well as intensive care units. Why? It's quick. It's simple. It's painless. It gives you very accurate results on the status of the patient, and it is easy to do. To get accurate results, don't eat an hour before we test you. No extreme exercise for about 12 hours before we test you. Don't consume caffeine or alcohol the day before or right before, and make sure you're well hydrated. It'll help us get a more accurate measurement of your overall health. So what is the BIA? It really is an overall measurement of cellular health. And from time to time, it will give us an assessment which way your health is trending. How are the nutraceuticals working? How is lifestyle therapy working for you? How's lifestyle changes doing? So what does it measure? Let's go through the phase angle. Phase angle is like a GPA of overall health. It really measures aging stress within a cell or oxidative stress. It drifts downward as we age, of course. Our goal is to try to keep you over five because less than five, there's more cells dying than being regenerated. In fact, this number was used in Boston University Medical School to predict death six months before it happens with AIDS patients within a two week time frame. That's how accurate the phase angle can be. So you want to look at it as aging stress, oxidative stress, higher, better, lower, bad. Muscle mass is also a very important biomarker accurately measured by the bioimpedance analysis. Now, why is muscle mass important for health? It's not just for looks, not just for strength. It drives metabolism, your energy. It regulates your hormones. It helps testosterone levels. It's a reserve for energy, for sugar, and it soaks up your toxins. And you know what? It doesn't respond to just exercise. Nutritional status affects your muscle mass a lot. If you have malabsorption problems or not consuming enough proteins, muscle mass will decline. If you have a flare-up of any kind of inflammatory condition, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, anything like that, muscle mass diminishes because it's used as part of the immune system to fight inflammation. And your body will literally sacrifice some of your muscle mass to help fight the battle within your body. So it is affected by your overall state of being and is therefore an accurate, important biomarker of your health. Another thing that we can measure is your metabolic rate. Your metabolic rate is the rate that your body's metabolism burns calories at rest, and it's like being at sleep for 24 hours, and how many calories do you burn in that 24-hour period? That's what we're measuring. Of course, when you move about and you exercise, that number goes up. We are measuring resting basal metabolic rate. What does that really mean? It is affected by your muscle mass, your thyroid, your adrenals. And any time that you have any kind of a disorder with any of those, your metabolic rate will go down. So if you have a thyroid issue, yes, your metabolic rate goes down. The higher the number, the better, of course. With males, I like it to be above 1800. Ideally, 21, 22, 2300. That gives you what we call organ reserve, which allows us to take a few punches in life. Another important biomarker, body fat. BIA accurately measures body fat. It goes way beyond the ordinary ways of measuring body fat like you find in a gym. You really want to be around 15 to 22% on this one. Once you start going over 22%, it becomes somewhat inflammatory. When you're over 30%, it is very inflammatory. You've got angry fat. If you're a professional athlete, you can go down to 12%, but really below that, it starts to hurt the immune function. You become sick more often. You have no reserves. You get depressed. 
it is a very common fact that professional athletes that are regularly below 12% are chronically depressed. Body fat is very important for making hormones, maintaining your skin. It is important for brain function and you don't want too much of it either because it becomes inflammatory and it can take you down. Total body water is another important marker. You for sure want that number to be over 50% and ideally 60 to 65. Joint health, skin health, brain health, and organ function all declines when you are dehydrated. It is one of the more common nutritional efficiencies that I see at DBC. In fact, it may be the most common nutritional deficiency that I see. Hydration is important if you've been chronically less than 50%. It takes two to three months of rehydration to re rehydrate your cells. They're no longer used to being all plumped up like grapes. It takes a while to get them plumped up. So lots of water for a long time is critical to get it over 50%. Again, the ideal 65%. What may be even more important than total body water is where the water is. We call this water compartments. Some of the water should be inside your cells and some of your water should be outside your cells. Think of your cells like grapes. Most water should be inside your cell, inside the grape. Some outside. This outside water is used for intercellular and extracellular communication. And it is an important fact, but you don't want too much of it. Because when the outside water climbs high, it's a sign of toxicity. It's a sign of cell membrane breakdown. It's a sign of inflammation. So you want at least 60% of your water inside your cells, 40% outside. Really the ideal for males is about 37 to 38% water outside your cells. That's called extracellular water. And about 60 to 64% of your water inside the cells. So this number is probably the most accurate number for measuring inflammation. It is extremely sensitive, and I love using this to measure my patient's toxicity and inflammation. We use it to see which way your health is trending. So I've covered some of the more important biomarkers that the BIA does for us. It does more, but these are the ones that I want you to watch. These are very important biomarkers of health. Let's check them regularly and reference our DBC resource page for more information regarding the BIA.